Petrol scarcity set to worsen as NNPCL admits $6 billion debt. That's uh, the first uh, hot topic now. The Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, admitted to facing a $6 billion debt to petrol suppliers, causing financial strain and affecting petrol supply across the country. Due to the financial challenges, there are concerns that petrol prices may rise significantly particularly in filling stations operated by independent marketers. The federal government may reconsider paying fuel subsidies, which could further drive up petrol prices, potentially exceeding 1,000 naira per litre if subsidies are removed. Uh, Nick, our guest today is Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst and also uh, an expert in the petroleum sector. Good morning and welcome to the programme, Nick. Uh, good morning. Uh, here in Vancouver, in Canada, oh, my okay. time is 12 midnight. Oh, okay, Thank sorry that we had us. to keep you up <laughs> till this moment. Uh, but uh, not a problem. Yeah, uh, at least you have light, and then you can <laughs> drive. You're in Canada. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now from uh, NNPC, you are owing to uh, Nigerian government. You are owing NNPC. From NNPC, you are owing the marketers to we are not owing and now acceptance that six billion naira is being owed marketers and then because of that nigerians may have to be strangled because that is how it looks mm -hmm. help us make sense of why nnpc making so much profits will be owing six billion dollars mm -hmm. thank you very much and good morning to our viewers globally uh, this is a tragedy. I say it's a tragedy because, like we always, I always make the analogy that the Nigerian petroleum sector crisis is like a farmer, one of the world's biggest farmers. The children are hungry and very often find themselves keen up with their monies in their pockets and yet can't find food to buy. But this farmer is perpetually exporting foodstuff to other countries uh, whose citizens are enjoying the, the food and living well. That, that is the problem of the petroleum sector in Nigeria. We are one of the world's largest producers of crude oil, perhaps not any longer given that our production has collapsed to the one million plus barrels, but we are still a large producer. And Nigerians are very often thrown under the bus of petrol scarcity uh, as we speak now, Nigerians could have spent the night on queues around the country with their monies in their pocket. They are trying to root for this product. They can't get the product. And to further worsen the situation, Nigeria has got four refineries, four refineries with combined capacity of 425,000 barrels per day. These refineries have been mismanaged by an entity called the NMPC. These days, they are limited to their name. So NMPC Limited, um, and they are refining nothing. And because they are refining zero barrels of crude oil, we have now carried ourselves to the international market to go and buy petroleum products. And because we have now carried ourselves to the international market, we are now impacted by the exchange rate in terms of the cost of the products that we're buying. So this, this time become the, a complex situation that could easily have been solved if we were refining our crude oil internally and selling it to motorists in Nigeria. Now this is a situation we find ourselves. And for me, uh, this is where I am actually becoming impatient for President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Because when he came into office, my joy was that he was perhaps the first true private sector person to take the reins of power as Nigerian president. But not only that, he is an oil industry man. He is our man. And so he was in a position, as I thought, to see through this whole quagmire and unbundle it so that more than a year into office, he would have already got hold of um, what we need to do to erase this shame and remove these sufferings that Nigerians have put through 
very frequently. Because a year is enough that if President Tinubu had hit the ground running, immediately he said fuel subsidy was gone at the Eagle Square. On his first day in office, he would have started the process of taking our refineries away from the NMPC, putting them in the hands of those who can fix them, and by now, at least one or two of those refineries will be in production. But he has left the refineries in the hands of the NMPC, who have not done anything with these refineries for upwards of 20 years. Not only that, he has left the management of the NMPC intact. If he had left the refineries in the hands of the NMPC, but taking away the management and putting new people who can manage the refineries properly, I would think that he has a solution. But for him to leave the refineries in the NMPC hands and leave the management that has shown by their own conduct that they cannot manage these refineries, I don't understand President Tinibu's um, plan to erase this challenge that we have of downstream petroleum up and down. And so we have got the whole story. Of course, fuel subsidy has got a bad name, and so nobody wants to use fuel subsidy again. Fuel subsidy was used last in the President Jonathan's government. President Buhari said it was under recovery. Mm -hmm. And President Tinubu is saying it is short for. But we know that what is happening is that the cost at which they are landing petrol is higher than the cost at which they are selling at the pump. And so there are a number of questions. Number one, we know that Nigeria has this um, domestic crude supply, which because the refineries are not working, we're using it to send this crude to refineries um, abroad to refine for us. I have never heard the NMPC talk about this um, agreement. Are we still sending crude to refineries abroad? If yes, then why should we be talking about cost of importing products? If it is our crude oil that they are refining and sending to us. But if we're no longer sending the crude oil abroad, what is happening to those barriers? That question hasn't been answered. You know, and the NAP hasn't addressed it. You know, so I will ask that the NMPC to bring clarity on that so that we can see to the bottom of this fuel crisis that we're facing. Now, this question is like, it, it's, it always comes up all the time. At least I ask it. What is the importance of NNPCL to the Nigerian economy right now? We heard it has been privatized, and we were hoping that it will just be another kind of, uh, of company, like private companies, or at least just a regulator that will have no business in importing or exporting any of these things, whether crude oil or the uh, finished products. So what is NNPCL still doing in the Nigerian economy? How helpful is it or how, how impactful is it in our economy or how damaging is it? Given that even the World Bank had accused the NNPCL of not being transparent, so we know what they've been like in recent times, mm. so why are they still here? What are they doing for us? NNPC is a big problem to the Nigerian economy. And for me, this is one of the areas where I thought President Tinubu was going to come in and surgically deal with the situation. The NMPC needs to be unbundled. The NMPC, a lot of people don't even understand that the NMPC is a business. The NMPC is pretty much a business like Shell, Mobile, Total, or Exxon are businesses. You know, some people think that NMPC is, uh, is like a regulator, maybe he has a government role. He doesn't have a government role. It's a business owned by the government. And you can imagine that the NMPC equivalent, like the Saudi Aramco, are delivering the humongous profit to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Our own business has constituted a drain on national resources. You know, this is a company that is still paying staff, is still paying maintenance and all of that for refineries that have not refined a single barrel of crude oil for upwards of 10, 15, 20 years. Wh which business does that? You know? And then the other thing is, 
you know, Nigeria has initial agreement with international oil companies. Nigeria also has signed production sharing contracts with international oil companies. These companies, when they produce crude oil, a share of that crude oil belongs to the federal government of Nigeria. Tragically, the government of Nigeria has allowed the NNPC to be the one to lift that crude oil and sell it. So they will lift Nigeria's crude oil, sell it, and use it to pay themselves humongous salaries, you know, uh, and, 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 and deal with the money is the, is the balance that they now put in the federation account. And this NNPC has got the temerity over time to tell us that, oh, they have spent all the money and there is nothing left to be put in the federation account. If I were President Tinubu, the first thing I would do would be to take away Nigeria's crude oil, share of crude oil produced by IOCs away from the NNPC. I can have a department in the presidency or the Minister of Petroleum that can be telling, taking that crude oil, selling it, and banking the money intact in Nigeria's bank account. So that the NNPC can go and look for their money. If they don't have money, if they are doing nothing and they don't have money, then they have to deal with it. Instead of leaving off Nigeria's crude oil that is being produced by the IOCs. So the NNPC is a big problem. How can you not get the refineries to work? Because there is nothing rocket science about refining technology. The technology is there, you know, everything is there, that they can't get these refineries to work for me is bordering on the margins of sabotage. Because those who are in the oil and gas industry can tell you that refining is nothing other than cooking crude oil. You cook crude oil. And just like those boys in the Niger Delta, that it, it does refine it. You cook crude oil, and at different boiling points, petroleum products are extracted. Why would the NMPs not be able to do this over time? Giving us fake promises over time that refineries are going to come on stream. Mm. So that would have been the first thing. The second thing is, let us not forget that when President Tinubu made that statement, fuel subsidy is gone on May 29th, last year, 2023. The crude oil was hovering around that $75 per barrel mark. That was the cost of crude oil as at that time. And fuel subsidy went. So so cost of uh, petrol per liter jumped from about 160, 180 to 500 and something. As we speak today, crude oil is still hovering around that $75 per barrel. Why then is it that we are still talking about subsidy? If crude oil was $75 in 2023, May 2023, and subsidy was removed and pump prices jumped to uh, 500 and something, and today pump prices are nearly the 700, and crude oil is still around that $75, why are we talking about subsidy? So there are a lot of things that are not being explained to Nigeria. And the NMPC is not helping matters. It's a dark boss. Nobody knows what is going there. I mean, recently, the Minister of Finance, that is the Chief Financial Officer of Nigeria, con con considered on TV that he does not know how much liters of uh, petrol that are consumed in Nigeria yes. every day. Imagine the Chief Accountant of a company saying, I am supposed to be paying for supplies to my company, but I don't know the quantity that they are supplying. Yet he's paying. So these are the issues. And I think President Tinubu needs to pay more attention to the downstream sector of the petroleum industry. Right now, we are not seeing that. All right. Um, so let's talk about our current, our present reality right now. And we're seeing petrol scarcity in most states in Nigeria right now. And it's said to worsen with the NNPCL um, owing about $6 billion debt. Now, the question is, you know, they get this, this um, petrol from other suppliers. And then it is said that they've not been remitting the funds. If they're, you know, um, saying that they've made profits and if they're getting this, um, these products from suppliers, what happens to the money? 
the money that they made because of course a supplier gives you a product you sell it and you're supposed to remit the money why is the nnpcl owing about six billion dollars and what does this even mean because if we're already seeing petrol scarcity right now what's going to happen in the next couple of days next couple of weeks um uh, especially with the fact that there's even a there's even a high chance that this product is going to increase in price going as high as 1405 naira per liter a big question because the big question here is that when the nmpc imports the product like you rightly say yeah. they are not giving the products free of charge to nigerians exactly they are selling the products to nigerians and nigerians are for these products so the question is that where is the money that they are collecting at the various petrol stations where these products have been sold where is that money you know because like we said, from 161.80 back in May last year to about 700 now, it's a big jump. So even if we're talking about subsidies... And it will be a bigger we'll jump if it goes to 1,400. Uh -huh. That's double yes, what it, it is it, right it, now. But the question is, you see, this is where the question is. The question is that, number one, the NNPC does not even tell us the landing cost of what they are bringing in. What is the landing cost and what is the quantity that is coming in? Like in that same interview uh, I referenced, the Minister of Finance said that the products that are being brought in are going as far as... Uh, uh, going as far as Central Africa that the products are going to West African nations and as far as Central Africa. I'm quoting him. So how much of this, uh, what quantity of these products come into Nigeria? What quantity is consumed by Nigeria? What quantity is smuggled? And you know, Nigeria who will talk about this kind of things. It's very painful. Because you know, a trailer, a trailer of uh, petrol, that a, a, a whole trailer of petrol is just 33,000 liters. <coughs> So for you to smuggle one million liters of petrol, you need 30 trailers to mm. smuggle only one million. So for you to smuggle, let's say, uh, uh, five million uh, liters, you need 150 tra trailers. And they say that these trailers are just strolling across the border, carrying our uh, 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 petrol, to neighboring countries and as uh, Central Africa, all the security agencies at the border and nothing is happening. They don't make highway to pass. How are they passing? And the Minister of Finance is not asking the questions of the customs, of the uh, the police, of the GSS, of this uh, um, army, of the uh, uh, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps who are manning the borders. You know, and at the end of the day, they say, oh, Nigerians have to pay more so that uh, it, it, there's, it's, there's a disincentive for smuggling uh, petrol. How can the failure of security agencies to stop the smuggling of petrol now become a consequence of Nigerians having to pay more? So we, we, whichever way you look at it, there's no information that we're getting. NFP is not giving us information. We're hearing about smuggling, which... The border people are not stopping it, and nobody is sacking anybody at the border. And we don't even know if the cost, the landing cost is 1400 or whatever. Who knows? Because the, 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 the crude oil cost, as we speak today, is the same, almost the same, with what it was in May last year. So what is bringing up the jump from 700 to 1400 These are the information that we're not getting. Are you recommending in in clear terms that it be scrapped or you are rec recommending a an overhaul of nnpc yeah my recommendation will not be to scrap the nnpc because it's a company that has been existing for a long time nigeria has invested a lot of money into tar deals with the nnpc and so the first thing I would recommend is that the NNPC should be removed from selling Nigeria's share of 
crude oil produced by the IOCs. So that the NNPC will swim or sink with their own monies. If they were to survive on their own monies, I know that they will not allow five, their four refineries to lie fallow for this long. They will find a way to make money from there so that they can pay their salaries. So the NNPC's management needs to be changed because they have proven over time that they cannot do anything. And the government should then, in the medium to long term, see how they will fully privatize the NNPC. You see, privatization of the NNPC does not mean government will no longer own NNPC. The government can still have ownership of the NNPC, but allow private sector to come in. This is the NLNG model. So if you look at the NLNG, the NLNG is, is owned by the government of Nigeria, but it, it has private sector participation. So the private sector are the ones who are managing the NLNG. And because they are the ones managing the LNNG, NLNG has grown from 31 to 27 today and is delivering dividends to government in the, in the neighborhood of billions of dollars every year, employing Nigerians and exporting gas every day. That is the kind of um, structure that the current NNPCL needs. Because with people like um, uh, the, the current management, we, we carry who is there, who comes to, to, to give us press conferences. What the man is giving us is press conferences instead of giving us petrol. There's nothing that is going to happen in the current NNPC as set up. And there's nothing that's going to happen if the NNPC continues to send Nigeria's crude oil, which they didn't do so. The IOC is produced it, but they took it, sold it, and they are using it to pay their, their cost. They will never have that incentive. So this is what I recommend. The government has to do something about the refineries. The government will either sell off the refineries completely or privatize them. And if government privatizes the refineries, it means the private sector will also come in coming with their capital, with their technology, and with their expertise, so that they can revamp this refinery. I believe that the refineries can still be revamped. You know, even though they have been allowed to decay for a long time, the, the equipment, the installed equipment are there. And let's not forget that in, in 2007, when President uh, Obasanjo was living, which was uh, about 17 years ago, the refineries attracted uh, uh, over $700 million dollars that were paid by to for the Kaduna and the Potaka refineries by a consortium that had uh, uh, Aliko Dangote and uh, Ote Dola and Co. in. That's to tell you that the refineries still have value. And the federal government should look to unlocking that value by privatizing the refineries so that the NNPC uh, will get their hands off it and they can go and face other businesses that they are doing. Okay, well, a good recommendation there. I hope that the people who need to are listening right now. And mm -hmm. if they're listening, they're going to take action because it's, it goes beyond just listening. Yeah. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Agule, for coming on the program today and helping us make sense of what is going on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. And, and, and thank you as well. And uh, it's quite painful to see the sufferings that Nigeria are undergoing on all counts, including the fact that we can't even see petrol to buy. Unfortunately. Hopefully things get better real soon. Yeah. Well, we're we talking to Nick Agbule, a, um, a, a public affairs analyst and also an expert in the oil industry. We're going to take a break now and when we return, please declare Britain Nigerian wanted for attempting to overthrow Tinubu. Stay with us.